Hi, and thanks for joining me this week. If you're able to join us live, great. If not, this will be recorded so that you can catch it on YouTube later. And we'll send out a link so that you can grab that anytime and watch it when you want to. This week, we're going to cover some tips for Google Classroom. And if you've never used Classroom, we do have an online class and some other afternoon workshops that you can attend to learn more. Um, but if you've been using Google Classroom for a while, then maybe you'll pick up some of these tips and these will be something that you'll find helpful. So without further ado, so that you guys can see what we're gonna do, I'm gonna present my screen and I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of things that we can do with Classroom. So what I've done here so far is I've created a class and I just called it Sample. You do have to give any class that you create a name, um, but I do. you don't have to give it a section or a subject, but I do find that it is helpful on the section to write the hour on there uh, or enter the hour on there so that you can keep track of them and keep them organized inside Classroom. Um, the way I did this is I went to the top right and I clicked on this plus sign up here and it allowed me to click on create class. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cr click create and if, if you put in a subject what it will typically do is it will try to match the banner up at the top to your subject. Um, it didn't necessarily know what to do in this case, so it just picked something at random. But like if, if I chose American history, it would have put uh, a nice historical type banner up there so that uh, it matched my class. But um, if, if you don't like what it gives you, there is a way that you can change that. If you go to the bottom right of the banner and click select theme, you have the option of choosing from these banners that are default choices. Um, you also have the option of choosing patterns and you can choose any of those but um, what I found that's really interesting to do is to upload upload your own photo now if you click the upload photo option it will allow you to pick a photo from your computer so if I do that I'm going to show you what that looks like really quick and um, I'm going to grab uh, like for instance this baseball Minuteman picture I know it's not big enough but I'm going to click open if you choose a picture that is not large enough to fit the banner size, it'll tell you that. And it'll also tell you this tip that 800 pixels by 200 pixels is the standard size for a banner. So knowing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a banner uh, using Google Drawings. So if you go to Google Drive and hit New, More, and Google Drawings, uh, you can actually use Google Drawings much like you would use Paint or some other program. And I'm going to go up here to the File menu and choose Page Setup. And on Page Setup, uh, it gives you the orientation or page size. And if you click this menu, you can actually go down to Custom. And then you can enter the size that you want for the, the page setup. I'm going to change this from inches to pixels. And I'm going to enter 800 by 200 because that's what they told us was a standard size and I click OK you see here it looks a lot like the dimensions that you would see on this banner here so I'm gonna go ahead and make my own banner um, I'm gonna put a shape in the background and then I'm gonna fill that using the paint can and what I find that's interesting sometimes is rather than just like a solid color a gradient fill is kind of nice so I'm going to add a gradient to that and I'm going to change the the uh, background color or the uh, the outline color uh, to the same color hopefully as the the gradient fill so now we've got a nice uh, gradient you know from dark yellow to, to light yellow and then I'm going to insert an image in here with insert uh, images you can do Google Drive uh, pictures pick from drive options that you have even if it's in your team drive and I'm gonna go down here and grab uh, one of our official logos and I'm gonna throw that guy on there and you can also do Google searches too if you want to do a Google search maybe you don't know what you want maybe you want to search around a little bit and see what's out there you can do that as well um, just hit insert image and you can choose back here the search option and it allows you to do a Google safe search then I'm going to throw some text on here and uh, sometimes I'll choose to use text with pictures and then upload it as a banner but it doesn't always come through as well uh, I'll show you what I mean um, 
I'm gonna put this on here really large and center it. Uh, so we use the centering tool so it's centered and then we'll make it a little bit bigger and we'll change the font to something different looking. Now, this is this is what I want. So from here, what do I do? Um, I'm gonna have to export this. And what we wanna do is we wanna go to File, Download As, and choose Ping. Um, ping files are a type of picture file that show up really well for web elements on, on web pages and, and websites. And so here it is, it's downloaded to my Downloads folder. So I'm going to go back over to my class, I'll click Upload Photo, and I can either select Photo from Computer, but since I've already done the download and it's still in my download bar here, I'm just going to drag it up there, let go, and it uploads it and it'll change it, and there's my banner. Now you can kind of see here how it doesn't show up that well on there, but since Google Classroom doesn't let you put an editable text box up there, um, this, this works. So and it kind of lends my own style and flavor to the class. So, um, so that's one tip. Um, hopefully, you, you know, that's something that can kind of help you kind of personalize your class. A couple other things uh, that you might want to do with Classroom, if you go to the About menu, uh, this is actually where you can add class materials to your class. Um, a lot of people may not know that if you click this Add Class Materials, this is a great place to put your syllabus. Um, and kids can access the syllabus from here anytime they need. If you have stuff that you use all the time with kids, whether it's a syllabus or links or um, you know doc documents in your class, maybe it's a, a classroom supply list, put that stuff here. Because if you put it here, then that means um, they can always go back to get it from here. If you put it in the stream, they'll have to search for it throughout the stream. And you can add a topic to it if you want to, and then they can filter on that topic to find it. But it's much easier just to jump over to the About menu and grab the syllabus really quickly. And so, you know, I'll do that. I'll search for my syllabus. That's gonna be in my drive. Do that. And I'll grab that syllabus and we'll attach that. Okay, and so we've got a syllabus there. And we can also put some links on here. This is um, a link to my uh, Google page so that if kids want to watch my tutorials, they can go there and watch those. So anything that you want to put here, you, you can put here. You can even put an intro video to your class so that your kids know a little bit about you. You can talk to them up front before they um, really get into the school year and they can watch that as homework the first week of class. Uh, once you've got that, just click post and that becomes a permanent fixture on your about page. Okay. If you have a co-teacher in your class, or maybe you work with a, an IEP teacher that needs to kind of uh, take a look around and see how the kids are doing in your class, the Invite Teacher option that's on this About menu is a great option for you to use. Just click Invite Teacher, and then you can type in their email address and then invite them to the class. And then the next time they log into the class, uh, the Google Classroom environment, they will see out here in their classes they will see a tile for your class that says um, invite and it shows that they've been invited to join your class and so they can do that anytime that they want to. Um, one of the other options that I wanted to share with you guys uh, that I'm not sure if you've seen yet, new option that just came about with Google Forms. This is an awesome little feature. You can now uh, create a Google Form as a quiz so I'm going to create one really quick just to show you what I mean um, we'll call this my uh, forms quiz and I'll make a, a spot for them to collect their name and then I'll go in and add my first question and so we'll put some options on here Okay, and uh, th this is just for um, just for fun uh, to kind of show you how this works. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this question. Um, I've only got one question in here, but if you didn't know this already, you can actually turn a form into a quiz just by going up to this settings icon, clicking on the quizzes option, and then hitting make this a quiz. Okay, 
Um, if I hit save, it is now a quiz that kids can take. And I'm going to add that to my class. To add any assignment to your class, you just go to the plus sign and click create assignment. We'll call this forms quiz. And then I'll go to drive. And because I'm looking at my recent items, it's right there. I click add. And this option is the most awesome feature. It's one that I've been waiting for for a long time. It's great importing. When you check this switch right here, then that means that once your kids have taken the quiz and they're finished with it, there will be a button inside Google Classroom to import the grades out of the quiz right into Google Classroom. And since we already have the ability to sync Google Classroom with Wingage, that takes a lot of the work away from you in hand entering scores from a Google Forms quiz into Classroom and then exporting it to Wingage. So make sure that switch is turned on when you're using a Google Form as a quiz and, and then hit assign. When I open this assignment and look in here, this is the button that you'll now see that you didn't see before. And so once all your kids have taken the quiz and they're finished with it, then you can hit import grades and it puts the scores over here for you. You don't have to do a thing, okay? Um, one other tip though that a lot of people don't realize is that they can actually schedule assignments all at once on Saturday or Sunday for the entire week and then schedule them to show up when they want and not worry about kids seeing things earlier, especially like a quiz. So if I go into the plus sign and click create assignment, one of the things that you may notice is that down here next to the assign button, you have a drop down menu and it shows that you can schedule an assignment to show up at a certain time. So if you want to schedule the assignments for your entire week on a Saturday and you don't want them to show up until you're ready, you can tell it, hey, don't let this show up until Halloween uh, at uh, 9.25 a.m. And, you know, this is my second period class. I don't want them to see it until they actually come to class. And so you can schedule it to show up at that time. And then kids won't be able to see it in the stream until that time. And you can see here, since I've done that, it says up here, saved posts. And if I click this drop down, I can see that assignment and it's going to post on October 31st at 9.25 a.m. So nice thing that you can do there. You can schedule things to show up when you want them to. Well, hopefully some of these tips are, are things that, that are helpful to you. Um, and if you were able to join us, great. If you weren't, um, you know, catch this video online later. And if you want to, um, check with us next week to see what our next webinar is about. Hopefully we'll have a running schedule that I can send out to you guys soon that explains all of the different webinars that we'll have and what topics we'll have so that you can pick and choose and join us later. So again, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.